throw it away, forget yesterday. Monster snarls to know if someone stole the Kaio's power and reduced him to that pink, piggish form from earlier. Damn it! And no denying the irony here. Whether this was a premonition, Boo slash Kaio power at play, or just story exposition, the Lord of Lords sees now. When he was obliterated, so was his god power. Strangely enough, it would seem this was actually Moro's doing. Now that he's taken a glimpse at those latent memories, it's clear to him that no being in this universe possesses the power to seal away his magic. How wonderful it is to not have that fear anymore! Goku's best bud curses that Kaikai Kai thing was just one of many gimmick techniques that never actually get the job done. And he has a point. When's the last time the Malphaba, for instance, worked as advertised? Even Goku himself thinks that Goku's best bud is right. Which is why they've got to do something now! As Eureka warns, Moro's dead ahead! Seeing the fight a little closer, the fact remains that they're still completely powerless in outer space. When their new pal gets their focus for a moment, he wants to know if they're absolutely certain that the two of them are more powerful than Moro. With magic aside, Vegeta believes they are objectively the stronger fighters. Just one of them in full power Super Saiyan Blue form could handle him. In that case, the officer will drag Moro back to the surface of Planet Namek where they two can finish the job. Although a bit silly, the duo are shocked to see the spaceman don a spacesuit. He politely requests they return to Namek in the meantime. He's off. Looking over to Jocko, can all their outfits do that? But nah, that one was custom made for Miris. So Jocko isn't backing him up, Goku queries. And he can't, and he won't. He's scared of outer space, man. to have another net after all. Miris uses the opportunity to slingshot over to the Lord of Lords, beckoning if he's still with them. They need to get Moro back to Namek somehow so the team can battle him together. Clearly more level-headed than most of the warriors we've become used to. The Kaiowutters. Yes, of course. He knows he can't win this alone. Before that, he wants to confirm something with the Great Lord. He wants to know if he can still use instant teleportation. Who replies that he certainly knows his stuff. As a Lord of Lords, he can. Excellent! When the time comes... Interrupting the pair, Moro screams. You again! Blasted Galactic Patrol! You 
come at me with a toy? Maris is able to communicate the plan after all, whether simply before Maris's interruption or the telepathy that surely the Kaioshin has. Even the patrolman lets himself smile given the results. Gotta count the small wins. Just then, Goku is able to sense Moro's key back on Namek now. He extends a hand and tells Vegeta they need to go after him. Changing a quick glance, Goku thanks their new friend. Now three on one, our hero hollers over to Moro asking if he's ready for a fair fight. They're at full power now, so he won't get away again. As Maris boards the ship, Jocko geeks out a little and exclaims how awesome he was out there. Though back to business, they must hurry back to Namek too, leading his colleague to piff this off and assure him not to worry. Cause, you know, they're a teeny bit stronger than Jocko himself. Maris chuckles and guesses so. On one hand, they may just get in the way and become hostages in their cause. On the other, why does Maris seem to be a little more than he should? Moro places his hands on his hips. Ah, Planet Namek. It still holds energy. What a waste to leave food on my plate. Though with a smug attitude, the prince barks that he doesn't think he comprehends the situation. They're about to destroy him once and for all. Ha 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 ha. Ha ha ha. So foolish. So naive. Now a little bemused by his confidence. Moro snarls that they seem to have forgotten something quite important. The third wish! At the Galactic Patrol Prison. If the name didn't give it away, it's a location under the jurisdiction of the Galactic Patrol. We're taken back to Moro's prison cell. A patrolman cowers that Moro guy's magic is scary. It even got him out of this prison. Another notes that he managed to melt the bars. And the Galactic King wants this repaired quickly? That's a tall order. Purple Imp replies that Captain Mirror set out to recapture Moro. They gotta have things in tip-top shape on their end. But Moro was already able to break through the prison's super strong defenses. What'll stop him from doing it again? Although the jury's still out on that. The other knows they just gotta believe in the Galactic Patrol. Greenworm thinks maybe they should be wary of the other prisoners here instead. To which the little fella replies, Nah, Moro's the one to watch out for. The others could never escape on their own. 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 The duo walk into a room that contains a menagerie of beans. As they resume their station. The 
the patrolmen from earlier escort the Macarini gang to a fresh batch of cells. Who of which don't appear to be very pleased returning to their home away from home. Frankenstein orders him to get in. Doing so without protest. He scolds how many times do they have to lock they three up? Can't they learn their lesson for once? Ushering a scoff from their leader. Huh, a life of crimes, the only kind for us. Which, likely unintentionally, mirrors back to what Jackie Chun said to Goku back in the day. Though in his situation, it was about a martial artist's life. And until they can get as good at crimes as Goku is at fighting, they're gonna have to get used to that little cramped space. Frank rolls his eyes that it's unfreaking believable. They must actually love it in here. Checking back in on New Namek. The entire station begins to rumble as the GP tries to figure out what's happening. But no, no, this can't be! The cell barriers have gone down! There's nothing keeping the prisoners in their cells! In trepidation, Provo squeals if there was a malfunction, commanding Green to hit the switch! Slowly and equally freaked out, the detained soon discover the same. There's no barrier. That's when it's discovered the power itself is out. This is bad. But how is that even possible? It's not like a trillion dollar space station doesn't have one or two contingency plans for this. Confirming what so many believe was surely too good to be true. One after another, the prisoners holler it is true. The barriers are down. Is it really their chance to make a break for it? Voices echo out celebrating their freedom. Meanwhile, one inmate in particular merely sits in a cell smiling. You really pulled it off, Lord Morrow. Finally taking his opportunity to exit, a couple others approach him as we're left to wonder what influence Morrow left on these people. We also find out his name is Sagambo. The little one from the Macaroni crew yells over to his big bro that this is their chance to run too. Pausing, he's guessing this is Moro's doing. Weirdly, he seems hesitant to take advantage of the situation. The patrol panically tries to get a hold of HQ, but to no avail. What the heck is going on? The weasel's forming a proper business. What all did Moro's wish entail? Only for the prisoners to be released from their cells. Or was the wish made in such a way to doom all of the Galactic Patrol as a whole? Clearly outmatched by the felons. Frank screams to know what they think they're doing, demanding the inmates back in their cells. Having him dead to rights, Sagambo states that he knows their spaceship is here, so he's gonna hand it over. <laughs> Without much recourse, if he wants to keep that ball-shaped thing between his ears. The villain summons the rest of them. They're coming along too. They ain't gonna hurt him. Yeti queries Pasta what about them? Are they going too? And believing this could get fun. Yes, they're gonna join the party as well. Alarms ringing out in Oriko's ship. It's an incoming message. No, an emergency dispatch straight from HQ. As Maris inquires of the situation. It's worse than they could have imagined. As their terrified expressions say only so much, Jocko shouts out for him to explain what happened. And it's the inmates at the Galactic Prison. They've staged a massive prison break. Say what? And the incident actually occurred only a moment ago. The message came late because they lost contact with the prison. 
but one meant to go, he says. That was right about when Moore obeyed his wish. Causing Eska to begin remembering a portion of what happened while he's being mind controlled. Since Shaco wasn't there for that, he asks what he's remembering. And he means Moro's wish. The final one! As the former reminds of the whole brainwashing thing where he is forced to state their wishes. Jeesh, that must have been traumatic. Would hate for someone to say anything that would make you relive that nightmare. Regardless, yes, that's the event he speaks of. In that case, Mirus puts two and two together. At the same time, Moro himself iterates the exact same thing to our heroes. For that final wish he demanded, it was for every prisoner in the Galactic Patrol to go free. Our protagonist want to know why he let them loose. Without answering, the goat looks to the sky and utters, Here they come. And he's right, up there! We're met with a wicked looking spacecraft. But is that really them? The prince wonders. And it seems likely. Goku can feel a lot of key signatures in there. When the ship opens fire on the gang. Caught off guard by the surprise attack, Goku asks the others if they think it's the freed prisoners. Kneeling at his feet, Sagambo, who offers himself to Lord Moro's service. Said Lord is quite pleased to see he brought a small army. Well done, indeed. As promised, he will share his power with all of them. But what does this entail? Seeing that the villain sneakily made his way onto the vessel during the confusion, this must have been his plan all along. He was waiting for his pals to show up. Getting our answer to the previous question faster than expected. The ones inside, the prisoners, their key just grew. Goku thinks Moro must have used his magic again. business looking more like a franchise. This is why he seemed so confident. He knew he only had to buy just a couple moments before these guys would be here. Our heroes had no idea he'd be bringing friends. Looking down with quiet joy, Moro lets loose his convicts to have at him. Goku and the others waste no time and jump straight to Super Saiyan Blue. He warns them to be on their toes. These guys seem tough. That is a fucking liquor from Resident Evil. Although his minions aren't making much ground. Moro can't help but grin ear to ear at the sight before him. One of them stutters out that these ain't your everyday Galactic Patrol guys. How are they this strong? Sakabo rallies for him not to turn yellow on him. Keep going at him! Unless they want to head back to the Slammer, they better obey Lord Moro's commands. So go! They can't hold them all off at once! Falling out of blue. Moro has started absorbing energy again. As Goku rushes upwards to put a stop to this, Sagambo offers to handle him. Punch. 
unless just profoundly caught off guard by the downgrade from God to Super Saiyan 3. Moro's magic might have made these guys a little more powerful than expected. Vegeta scolds his rival to pick himself back up, when he's brought all the way back down to his base form. The warriors gather themselves and manage to get back to Super Saiyan. Vegeta believes it's just the moment they drop their guard that the transformations have begun to fail him. Presumably without any power-up transformations, albeit immune to the drain the mage is putting on the planet and our heroes. The Lord of Lords gets slammed to the ground. Although Goku calls him Boo, Vegeta points out that the battle against Moro in space earlier must have taken a toll on him. Getting the monster's attention. He wants to know what he's really after here. What's the point of all this? Who unveils that it's all to create an ideal galaxy where he's free to consume planets as he wishes. Gathering these allies is one small step towards that end. Vegeta inquires if he holds a grudge against the Galactic Patrol then. Without immediately answering, the Fiend wonders. What he can say is, he detests the sort of peace that they people seek to preserve on this planet and others. All those who would strive for such nonsense should be eradicated. This gives them a bit of insight to who their adversary is. Someone who looks at peace as not only unattainable, but an outright foolish goal. And now they can't even go Super Saiyan. How many times will they have to fall for his tricks? Patrolmen in the air just now become aware of what's happening below. Maris turns to his comrade. We have to help our allies, Agent Jocko! Huh? By we, you mean me too? Eska chimes in that he can help as well. He can't fight, but at least he can heal their injuries. While Maris' knee-jerk reaction is likely to deny this offer, something in his face says this is a desperate situation. As the fight rages, these grunts aren't getting any weaker. Moro must only be absorbing the energy from the two of them. Suddenly their aggressors are... charred to death? Jaco and Miris. Their blaster's doing more damage right now than our protagonists. As a former bellows that as things are now, they have no chance of defeating Moro. They must retreat. Looks like they decided to bring the young Namekian along, pleading with the Lord of Lords to wake up. Fortunately, he was able to bring him too. Spotting these new guys, Sagambo asks who they are. Then the ship. They have backup of their own. Amira saves his pilot as he's able to snipe the fiend's weapon away from at least 7,000 Denny's restaurant booths away. Somehow, Goku's able to yell loud enough to warn Riko to get out of here. Doing the instant transmission fingers, he hears what Maris is saying. He wants him to grab his hand and they'll escape with instant teleportation. Looking over to the Great Lord of Lords, he beckons him to please use his own teleportation to warp to the Galactic Patrol HQ. A green. The Kaio and Eska are the first to retreat. Gathering in a circle, everyone grabs onto Goku. Everyone except Vegeta. Outright refusing the situation, Goku asks what's the holdup? If he absorbs any more of his energy, he won't be able to use instant teleportation again. Leaving the rebel to grunt. Stupid magic spells. Stupid god power. Forget it's a teleportation. They Saiyans pride themselves on physical might. A warrior race has no need for fancy parlor tricks. And yet, he's been reduced to this. 
have been enough of his ego, Goku reaches out demanding that they go. Does he want to die here or something? The fleeing ship catching his eye. Vegeta tells his rival to go ahead. This is where the two of them part ways. Desperately calling after him. With Jocko dropping his firearm and Mirish running out of ammo. It's now or never. They have to leave. So without being able to take Vegeta with them, the three of them teleport away, leaving the convicts amiss how they did that. But where did they run off to? Making his way to a Rico ship, the Saiyan besieges them to open up. At the Galactic Patrol HQ. Do -do 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 -do. Accidentally interrupting a rather private moment for the Galactic King. Goku apologizes, but he was the only key he could sense. Causing a much more sincere apology from Jocko. He's so sorry to interrupt his royal bath. The patrol leader has to ask what he thinks Vegeta meant by all that. And even Goku doesn't know what he could be thinking. Unable to get a hit on the elusive Ariko, the prisoners try in vain to bring him and Vegeta back down to the surface. Inside, the pilot warns his passenger that things are about to get bumpy. He might want to grab a hold of something. Going to Plaid, the patrolman loses him. Sagambo scolds, what are you idiots doing? While not acting. Letting the Saiyans get away doesn't seem to sit well with Moro. By the skin of their teeth, the two of them were able to finally get off the planet. They're heading back to HQ2. When Vegeta actually reaches out his arm and takes aim at Ariko, he scowls. No, you're going to fly this thing where I want to go. Now growing nervous. The pilot queries where that is exactly. With a direct determination in his eyes, the prince utters, they're going to planet Yardrak. 